So can you speak to the technical details of how perplexity works? You've mentioned already RAG, mm -hmm. retrieval augmented generation. What are the different components here? How does the search happen? First yeah. of all, what is RAG? Yeah. What does the LLM do? At, at, at a high level, how does the thing work? Yeah, so RAG is retrieval augmented generation. Simple framework. Given a query, always retrieve relevant documents and pick relevant paragraphs from each document and use those documents and paragraphs to write your answer for that query. Mm -hmm. The principle in perplexity is you're not supposed to say anything that you don't retrieve, mm -hmm. which is even more powerful than RAG, because RAG just says, okay, use this additional context and, and, and write an answer, but we say don't use anything more than that too. That way we ensure factual grounding. And if you don't have enough information from documents you retrieve, just say, we don't have enough search results to give you a good answer. Yeah, let's just linger on that. So in general, RAG is doing the search part with a query to add extra context yeah. to generate a, uh, a better answer, yeah. I suppose. You're saying like you wanna really stick to the truth that is represented by the human written text on the Correct. internet and then cited to that text. Correct. It's more controllable that way. Yeah. Otherwise, you can still end up saying nonsense or use the information in the documents and add some stuff of your own, right? Despite this, these things still happen. I'm not saying it's foolproof. So where is there room for hallucination to seep in? Yeah, there are multiple ways it can happen. One is you have all the information you need for the query. The model is just not smart enough to understand the query at a deeply semantic level and the paragraphs at a deeply semantic level and only pick the relevant information and give you an answer. Mm -hmm. So that is a model skill issue. But that can be addressed as models get better and they have been getting better. Now, the other place where hallucinations can happen is you have uh, poor snippets, like your index is not good enough. Oh, yeah. So you retrieve the right documents, or uh, but but the information in them was not up to date, mm -hmm. was stale, or, or or not detailed enough, mm -hmm. and then the model had insufficient information, or conflicting information from multiple sources, and ended up like getting confused. And the third way it can happen is you added too much detail to the model, mm -hmm. like your index is so detailed, your snippets are so, you, you use the full version of the page and you threw all of it at the model and asked it to arrive at the answer, and it's not able to discern clearly what is needed and throws a lot of irrelevant stuff to it, and that irrelevant stuff ended up confusing it and made it like a bad answer. Mm -hmm. So uh, all these three, or the fourth way is like you uh, end up retrieving completely irrelevant documents too. Mm -hmm. But in such a case, if a model is skillful enough, it should just say, I don't have enough information. So there are like multiple dimensions where you can improve a product like this to reduce hallucinations, where you can improve the retrieval, you can improve the quality of the index, the freshness of the pages in the index, and you can include the level of detail in the snippets. You can include the, uh, improve the model's uh, ability to handle all these documents really well. And uh, if you do all these things well, you can keep making the product better. So it's, Kind of incredible, I get to see sort of directly, because I've seen answers, uh, in fact, for, for perplexity page that you've posted about, I've seen ones that reference a transcript of this podcast, mm -hmm. and it's cool how it like gets to the right snippet. Mm -hmm. Like probably some of the words I'm saying now and you're saying now will end up in a perplexity answer. Possible. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's very meta. Including the Lex being uh, smart and handsome part. That's out of your mouth in a transcript forever now. <laughs> but if the model is smart enough, it'll know that I said it as an example to say what not to say. What not to say, it's just a way to mess with the model. Uh, the model is smart enough, it'll know that I specifically said this, these are ways a model can right. go wrong and it'll use that and say. Well, the model doesn't know that there's video editing. <laughs> So the indexing is fascinating. So is there something you could say about the, some interesting aspects of how the indexing is done? Yeah, so indexing is, um, you know, multiple parts. Obviously you have to first build a um, crawler, which is like, you know, 
Google has Google Bot, we have Perplexity Bot, Bing Bot, GPT Bot. There's like a bunch of bots that crawl the web. How does Perplexity Bot work? Like, uh, so this, that that's a that's a beautiful little creature. So it's crawling the web. Like, what are the decisions it's making as it's crawling the web? Lots, like even deciding like what to put in the queue, which web pages, which domains, and uh, uh, how frequently all the domains need to get crawled. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not just about like you know knowing which URLs. It's just like you know deciding what URLs to crawl, but um, how you crawl them. You basically have to render headless render, and then websites are more modern these days. It's not just the HTML. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of JavaScript rendering. Uh, you have to decide like what's what's the real thing you want from a page. And ob obviously, uh, people have robots the text file, uh, mm -hmm. and that's like a politeness policy where you should you should respect the delay time. Mm -hmm. so that you don't like overload their servers by continually crawling them. And then there's like stuff that they say is not supposed to be crawled and stuff that they allow to be crawled. And you have to respect that. And uh, the bot needs to be aware of all these th things and appropriately crawl stuff. But most most of the details of how a page works, especially with JavaScript, is not provided to the bot. I guess to figure all that out. Yeah, it depends. So some, some publishers allow that so that, you know, they think it'll benefit their ranking more. Mm -hmm. Some publishers don't allow that, and uh, um, you need to like keep track of all these things per domains and subdomains. And yeah, it's crazy. And then you also need to decide the periodicity yeah. with which you recrawl, and you also need to decide what new pages to add to this queue based on like hyperlinks. So that's the crawling, and then there's a part of like building, fetching the content from each URL, and like. Once you did that through the headless render, you have to actually build the index now. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to reprocess, you have to post-process all the content you fetched, which is the raw dump, mm -hmm. into something that's ingestible for a ranking system. Mm -hmm. So that requires some machine learning, text extraction. Google has this whole system called NavBoost that extracts the relevant metadata and like relevant content from each uh, raw URL content. Is that a fully machine learning system? Is it like, a, like a embedding into some kind of vector space? It's not purely vector space. It's not like once the content is fetched, there is some uh, BERT model that runs on all of it and uh, puts it into a big gigantic vector database, mm -hmm. which you retrieve from. It's not like that. Uh, because packing all the knowledge about a web page into one vector space representation is very, very difficult. There's like, first of all, vector embeddings are not magically working for text. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to like understand what's a relevant document to a particular query. Should it be about the individual in the query or should it be about the specific event in the query or should it be at a deeper level about the meaning of that query such that the same meaning applying to a different individual should also be f retrieved? You can keep arguing, right? Like what should a representation really capture? And it's very hard to make these vector embeddings have different dimensions be disentangled from each other and capturing different semantics. So uh, what retrieval typically, this is the ranking part, by the way. Mm -hmm. There's the indexing part, assuming you have like a post-process version per URL. And then there's a ranking part that, uh, depending on the query you ask, fetches the relevant documents from the index and some kind of score. And that's where like, when you have like billions of pages in your index mm -hmm. and you only want the top K, you have to rely on approximate algorithms to get you the top K. So that's that's the ranking, but you also, I mean, that step of converting a page into something that could be stored in a vector database, it just seems really difficult. It doesn't always have to be stored entirely in vector databases. There are other data structures you can use Sure. Uh, and other forms of uh, traditional retrieval that you can use. Uh, there is an algorithm called BM25 precisely for this, which is a more sophisticated version of uh, TFIDF. Mm -hmm. TFIDF is term frequency times inverse document frequency, a very uh, uh, old school information retrieval system that just works actually really well even today. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, BM25 is a more uh, sophisticated version of that is still you know, beating most embeddings on ranking. Wow. Like when OpenAI released their embeddings, there was some controversy around it because it wasn't even beating BM25 on many, many retrieval benchmarks. 
not because they didn't do a good job. BM25 is so good. So this is why like just pure embeddings and vector spaces are not going to solve the search problem. You need the traditional uh, term-based retrieval. You need some kind of n-gram-based retrieval. So for the for, for the unrestricted web data, you can't just... Uh, you need a combination of all, a yeah, hybrid. Yeah. And you also need other ranking signals outside of the semantic or word-based. This is like page ranks like signals that mm -hmm. score domain authority and uh, recency, mm -hmm. right? So you have to put some extra positive weight on the recency, Correct. but not so it overwhelms. And this really completely. depends on the query category. Yeah. And that's why search is a hard, lot of domain knowledge in one problem. Yeah. That's why we chose to work on it. Like everybody talks about wrappers, competition models. There's an insane amount of domain knowledge you need to work on this. And it takes a lot of time to build up towards like a highly, really good index with like really good ranking at all these signals. 